Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Cafecito Time. It is, it is that time of the day. So we need to do our inhale the good shit, exhale the bullshit. But we don't have coffee today just because we've had way too much of it. And I drank my water already. So I have it just a little bit. I just have the pretend. spit. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you read the water bottle, it's going to tell you three things. The source, what they put back in, and how they processed it. I learned that this weekend. All ready? Cheers. Inhale yeah. the good shit. Exhale the bullshit. <sighs> we have DJ producer Big Rob in the building. Hey, everybody. How's it going? How was your weekend, dog? Dude, it's fantastic, man. We uh, got our Christmas tree up ar- already. Damn. Yeah, we got all the Christmas stuff up because uh, of the kids scheduling and stuff. We wouldn't have them until like early December. We want to have the tree up for longer than just two weeks. So we're going to go ahead and do it two months total. You know, uh, Usually we would do it before Thanksgiving, but we did a little bit earlier. What about you guys? Uh, how was our weekend? Yeah. Because, damn, you just hit us with a whole bunch of information. <laughs> and well, I'm, our tree is not up. Uh, our tree is put up, put in, away. In the attic still. I mean, we feel like we're still kind of settling into the new house. I, my aunt came over on Saturday night, and it's funny because she said... Um, well, keep in mind, too, this drops on the 22nd, so Thanksgiving is this Thursday. Ah, okay. So your, so your aunt came over? Oh, yeah, she came over, and so she was like... Oh, she's like, oh, so you haven't finished furnishing? I said, you know what? I don't know if you guys, I, I'm this way. I am somebody who's OCD. So when I start, I must finish. Right, babe? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I mean, I, we've already furnished a lot. And so I feel like when I start to furnish that front room, it's because I'm about to finish the entire bottom floor of the house, you know, and I haven't been inspired by anything just yet. Like I need to find the right couch. Nothing's just kind of like and there. This, and this house is temporary as well. Yeah. And I keep thinking about that. I'm like, do I really want to mess with all that? The only thing I do want to do is probably uh, get the guest room going. Mm. I would like to have the guest room like a little bed in there so that, you know, if your mom wants to come over and spend the night, she's able to do that. There's a room for her, you know. My mom's scared she's going to get lost. So the only time she's been to my house is somebody brings her or I got to go pick her up. Mm, yeah. yeah, I know how that goes. <laughs> do you guys like hosting at the house? Like having people over and staying or not so much? No. Mm. <laughs> has to be very small yeah like a just a few number of people like just because I, I mean we got little ones they be screaming Torre tumba, i just tile. always feel like people that don't have little ones anymore they just don't have the same patience that he and i do because we have little ones yeah. or they have ojo and they're screaming and it's like oh uh, as soon as y'all leave we could calm them down yeah <laughs> but you gotta go so yeah so it's kind of one of those things i just feel like once they're i think once sunny's probably like a little bit older then I'd be like, hey, you know, because now she's able to play and communicate and I'm not having to guess why she's crying right now. I still have to guess. So, yeah, but it was it, we had a good weekend. Yeah, they have a lot. It was of my mom's too. birthday. Oh, we went to the Nutcracker this weekend. Not not Chingo, but I did. I took Penny for the first time. She was a trooper. She was really good. She was excited about it. Um, my sister's like, we should make this a tradition. I was like, oh, no, see, I came to peep game. I came <laughs> to see <laughs> next year. You're going to get this <clears throat> selling. I want to be in there next year. I don't even know what the Nutcracker Market is. Is it well, just like I'm going to be day? honest with you. It's a three day event. People buy three day passes. Um, was it Rasa? Wait, there? I'm sorry. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's a four day pass. Was Thursday, it Rasa there? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Okay. There's some there too. Um, and um, so Thursday is like a big thing. Like they even have like a fashion show for them. Like you buy VIP passes and you get to shop before anybody else does. So you're the first to shop without, you know, all this crowd because it's crazy in there. Um, but I did notice this year because I've only been one other time. I did notice this year that there was more vendors than Christmas stuff. And it's supposed to be, you know, it's nutcrackers. So it's supposed to be a lot of Christmas decor and all that but i did go about four years ago was the last time i went Mm. it's just a lot of people so you got to come mentally prepared for a lot of people so but we went at a perfect time we went at 4 p.m i think the big crowd was almost gone it's just the reason why we like were able to stroll we even got some i mean there's people that are women that are drunk you know they're they're drinking because they serve plenty of alcohol. Every section that you go to, there's a bar. Bottomless, okay. mic, bottomless mimosas. Mm-hmm. And um, really cool things though, because you see a lot of artisans in there. Uh, there was one person selling uh, like turquoise jewelry, 
And my mom, we went, we took my mom on Sunday because it was her birthday. And so she's like, oh, I want to go check it out. I was like, all right, let's go. Uh, we only went for an hour. So it was kind of nice. Um, and then um, she goes, oh my God. I told my, so I told my sister, I said, well, I said, I guess we'll see how much it is. And maybe we can both chip in on it. Right. But we had already bought her little lemon so my mm. sister's like wait, wait, chip in on what to get her what this ring that she liked you oh, know okay, so I was, that part. Okay, and uh right. and then so it's a turquoise like turquoise mm. stone so the guy's like this person this stone was found in new mexico and it was blah 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 and the silver is blah blah and then we're like mom's well, like okay she's like well i just want to know the price mm. but he gave her the whole story right so it's like so and this artist is from new mexico and like started telling how where the shape came from and everything mom's like okay and she's like, uh, and, and then first of all, he said everything's fifty percent off. So my mom's thinking, oh, I'm gonna get a deal then. And she's like, okay, so how much is the ring? It's like, uh, since it's only an hour before we're closing, she goes, we can do twenty one hundred. My mom goes like two one zero zero. What one comma? Yeah, <laughs> she's like Decimal twenty. Zero, she, my zero? mom's like, maybe he messed up, type of thing, right? And so she's, he's like, yeah, twenty one hundred. He's like, how many hundred dollar bills? Yeah, 21. my mom's like, okay. 21, 21. Yeah. Thank you. And walked off. She goes, esta mujer está loco. Quiere dos mil dollars por el anillo. In this economy? <laughs> She's like, on. hell no. And I was like, $2,000? I mean, it was just a re I mean. It's like, no, no, sir. We got a dark winter coming. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh my gosh. So it was really cool. So I guess if you're somebody who's into that, I I think it's a fun thing to do. I do want to do it next year um, because Sunny will be a little bit older, so maybe she'll survive it. We'll see. Yeah, but next year you're going to be selling. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm going to be selling. It's really hard to get in. There's some of the women that are in the hive um, that have, you know, they've been trying for like three years to get in and get Damn. behind. Two of the two of the, the women in there are in the Nutcracker. You kind of have to know someone also, and that'll be a better chance of you getting in. So I'm hoping I meet someone. Mm -hmm. If you're listening and you are part of the Nutcracker committee or you've been a volunteer, if you know somebody, send me a DM so I can get in. If you attend our church, uh, <laughs> hopefully we can have some favor. What are you guys going to be doing for uh, Thanksgiving? <laughs> Damn, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We haven't even figured that out. I know my family's getting together at 12 for lunch. And my family's, I'm going to be. Um, Talking about all the conspiracy theories that came true. <laughs> so my, but my all, parents. All are my go theories with it. that came true. The parents. My, uh, my parents. Everybody will just go along with it. It'll be like, yeah, they'll probably add to the story. Some of them probably. Listen, I know listen to the podcast from here to there, so they'll just probably be like, hey, so did y'all talk about this? Because I, maybe I didn't catch it, but they're all into all that stuff. Like right now, the crypto stuff. I know you guys probably. I'm barely like. Do you know much about it? A little it? bit. Yeah. I wonder how many listeners of of Cafecito the Time had like a husband or an uncle or the, or something that in, that invested in it and then lost a ton of money. Wow. And then there's those memes of like people that are like uh the relative at the thanksgiving this year that's like so uh, everyone's like so how's crypto right and the one guy at the end of the table just kind of with his head down because people are losing all of their money why what's happening well you're talking about FTX, ftx specifically yeah which basically was a big money laundering scheme to give money to the democrats <laughs> yeah so it's it's like a, it's an exchange right where you go and you know it's like a, a trading exchange for cryptocurrencies or whatever and this guy like if you've seen any videos of this guy that was supposed to be running this whole thing he's just like uh, like just a, no offense, but like a dirty, dingy looking guy. That That's was, how a lot of those like nerdy uh, startup dudes are. Yeah. In Silicon Valley. Remember like, what's the Twitter guy? Um... Elon Musk? No, the Twitter. No, the old one. Uh, Dorsey, Jack Dorsey. Uh -huh. He's always like, when he would do a Senate hearing or something, like a messy hair and beard, and he always looked like he was just coming from a retreat out in the desert. That's this guy. Well, yeah, because a lot of those um, tech people, they're just like rich and you know young and yeah they had like a whole like sex island of like all their co-workers were like in a relationship together and like the yeah his, with the ftx people yeah the ftx people and now apparently like they've lost like they're losing all the money they filed for bankruptcy but it was all a big scheme like like it wasn't just we stole money from people it was like we founded the crypto uh days after biden uh said he was gonna run and then the dudes, uh, Friedman's, his mom, mm -hmm. it, it's just, it, it's well, too Maribel much. Well, Maribel had asked if we could have somebody to come in and talk about NFTs, so she wanted to send her person to come in. What's the difference between that That's and something crypto? That's totally different, yeah. It's hard I still to don't get it. That's so hard to get. Sorry. So she's like, would, all, would you like to have someone on your podcast? I'm like, uh, sure. I don't even know what I'm going to ask, because I wouldn't even know how to interview. I don't even know where to begin. I, I literally would be like... Give What's me the, the NFT? What, give me the yeah. NFT for dummies Start from scratch, right yeah. now. Like, what do you think the future of currency is going to be? Let me ask myself that first because Chingo might have a, a already, longer I answer. I already told her what I thought. 
Well, um, I think it's going to be like China. When we went to China um, two years ago, three no, years ago? it was way more than that. I think it was like 17 or something. 17 or 18? M- maybe 18, because it wasn't that long ago. Okay. Because Rania hasn't been living here that long. We, we went the year right before she moved down to Houston, back down to the States. Um, everybody pays with their what what is considered their version of Facebook. It's called WeChat. Mm. And so they don't even use money. So uh, my girlfriend's uh, motorcycle that we were on broke down. And she's like, oh, let's just stop at this mechanic. And literally, she just pulled out her phone, and that's how she paid him. So I think that's how we're going to pay each other. I, I mean, think it's going to be a credit score type of thing. That's how we're going to pay. Mm. Well, well, that we already have, which is kind of like paying people through Facebook. So the way or she, Venmo or I guess yeah, or, the, the way she paid the person through WeChat, it's like WeChat was like a bunch of apps in one. It was like Twitter mixed with Facebook, mixed with YouTube, mixed with this, mixed with whatever. whatever. But um, but yeah, we're we're seeing how I think they the U.S. government wants to create like this U.S. digital coin that they're going to monitor, and it's going to be connected to your social credit score and connected to your carbon footprint. So that they can probably penalize you and control you and, you know, be low commies and shit like that. What do you think, have you, seen, have you seen... Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Have you seen what? No, because um, I know we, we jumped into the subject of crypto and, and Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. But uh, have you seen Yellowstone? No, my dad loves it, dude. He keeps trying to get it's me to watch it. It's actually good. I heard really it's fantastic. Good. It's excellent because in one episode... You already getting to the nitty gritty. It's this. They got that kind of scene. This kind of scene. Somebody died. Boom, boom, boom. This person. You know what I mean? And I, and I don't want to pick on Game of Thrones, but it's like you probably got to have a whole season. Of oh Game of God. Thrones. Oh I fell my asleep God. so many times. I gave it. I gave it three three tries. I don't believe you. Three, three good times. tries. I mean, a lot of people I respect like that show Game of Thrones, but I just want to give props to the writers and the producers and the creators of Yellowstone, where they were able to create this drama and these characters and this a story and this b story and these plots and you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and and just like you get a little slice of everything it's like you know they're fighting for the land you got the native americans what they were doing you got some political elements you got a little bit of sex you got somebody dying you got uh i don't want to be toxic like the daughter of the main character but man she's a badass though when it comes to business what got y'all to start watching that um a lot of reasons one of them is i heard how like cavenders and gallery furniture all their yellowstone licensed products uh they commented i think it was james uh, mr cavender he commented on how there was like a 40 percent increase in all like western wear all that kind of shit ever since the show dropped mm. right michael berry mentioned that detail as well so recently I had to go to Cavenders because we had that trip in RGV. I had to be fly. And I noticed they had a lot of Yellowstone stuff, right? And then obviously we went to uh, Round Top, the, um, yeah. the market festival thing. At the Arbors. <clears throat> yeah. So you have like these, um, it's like this aesthetic, aesthetic that a lot of the women are into. Where it's like the little cowboy hat and like a Dolly Parton shirt or like some Western stuff, boots. And have you noticed? Have you seen that? No, not at all. Well, it's funny because even at the Nutcracker, I went to this little store. I was at this one little booth and I saw these things and I didn't get what it was about. And then when I was watching the show, I was like, oh, you didn't understand the sayings. The now sayings. Uh, I get it. It's from Yellowstone. Mm. I was like, I had never seen the show. So unless you watch the show, you're not going to know what the t-shirts were about. And arguably, arguably, why is this aesthetic so popular? I mean, part of it is like, oh, it's just festival wear and girls like wearing the, I mean, they probably on their way to have an abortion. You know what I mean? There's nothing, (laughs) like there's nothing conservative about maybe some of these chicks that are like, I'm just fresh out of college and I want to go to the fucking Burning Man or wherever, like. Coachella and I want the little cowboy hat and they don't know nothing about Willie Nelson but they got the Willie Nelson shirt right so um but I would argue that if you watch the show and how it's rustic like um old school like they got buffalo and bison and you you got actual cowboys and you know it's like masculinity you got dudes having to do shit with their hands and the leather and this and the horse and and you haven't actually like work with the land and do shit i feel that there's a bit of like a visceral uh like a hunger and a thirst for like like uh, abraham said he was like we were he was saying about him we were taught to honor 
the sweat on your brow, like the work, like putting in the work and feeling good about mm. providing and being a man and getting your hands dirty. I'd argue that a lot of this um, culture, like attack on masculinity, like it's gone so, so extreme that maybe now people are like, I just want to see motherfuckers with some guns and riding on horses mm. and, and just taking care of business. Not That's all the so city, good. not not all the man bun city boy shit uh, all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Enough of that. Or like, what is that? The um Edgar the metro, haircut? all the metrosexual stuff. The Edgar haircuts. The cu? Yeah, that's something else. <laughs> so I was curious, just like what Kevin Cat Co- Costner's in the mm-hmm. Kevin Costner's one of the main characters, right? He's like the lead. Pretty He's much. the lead. So have you guys heard the controversy between him and like his role versus like his how his real life politics got involved with the show? No. Please explain. So uh, I'm just going to read this little piece here. The actor's hit show Yellowstone kicked off season five. Well, how, what season are y'all on? Let me ask you. Which one? one. It just started. Okay, so I've been seeing these articles. I don't watch the show. My bro, one, my my oldest brother and my dad love the show. And they're trying for literally two Thanksgivings now. They they talk about it every Thanksgiving, like it's the thing to watch. So I need to watch it. But uh, it says spoiler. Oh, actually, I don't want to spoil it. I think that sounds like a spoiler. Um, they asked him basically if he would run for for any kind of office, political office, and his quote was, "No, I don't think there's any reason for me to run." Costner said, "67 years old," t- told USA Today. Although I wish people uh, that did run had a bigger vision and more of a morality about how they see the country evolving. I'm disappointed. So then it goes on to talk about back in 08, he voted for Obama and he voted for Biden in 2020. Mm. Um, he said, uh, and uh, later came after his pick. Now transportation secretary, he had also was a Pete Buttigieg, but uh, butt gig fan. Pete Buttigieg, Buttigieg. Costner is a fan of Buck Gig. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, after he dropped out of the Democratic presidential race. Most recently, the Oscar winner showed support for Liz Cheney, vice chairman of the House and Select Committee of the J6 riot of the Capitol, blah, 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 uh, of former President Trump in her, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, it seems like, and he, oh, yeah, he wore this shirt. You guys had to have seen this, right? What, what does it say? What does it say? Uh, it's like a pro Liz Cheney shirt. What an idiot. So what he, a damn idiot. I'm yeah. for Liz Cheney. Yeah, I'm for Liz che Cheney. Pendejo. So people were, I mean. Now he's not going to watch I know, I, know. I almost no, didn't no, want no. to say it. No, but he can separate the art from the artist. Yeah. 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 I mean, you could be a brainwashed Hollywood elite, progressive elitist, right? But still, simultaneously, whether they know it or not, they're putting together a product where you're, like, for example, Hollywood it's super anti-gun when they're out and about in their in their mm-hmm. normal lives, but they be having some badass guns in all their movies. You would see you, what, yeah, see what I'm saying? You, yeah. Would you also say that this role like kind of uplifted more of the like people were moving to Montana, people were doing more of the rural lifestyle, yeah. right? They were believing more of the conservative type of like philosophies, right? Maybe. I, no. No. Let me let me let me let me correct you. All right. Are many people moving to Montana? Yes. But how many of those are just yuppies that want to gentrify and they want to be at the spa totally. and golf totally. and they want to, they're like, fuck the bison. We're not here to rough it out. They're like, we're not here to be cowboys. Mm-hmm. We're like, they cover that in the show Yeah, where, where, uh, there's a scene where, um, this dude's getting some ice cream with his kid. And he's like, what are transplants, daddy? Oh, that's folks that moved down here and yada, yada, yada. And. You know, none of this was. Did you? My eat? question is this, though. Oh, okay, okay, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. All right, hold that thought real quick. Anyway, they addressed the little transplant gentrifiers. While we're watching the show, how many times did I ask you, Marisol? What are the chances that <clears throat> that these are a bunch of like man bun wearing thespians and know how to act rough and tough? Mm-hmm. Like they might be athletic enough to ride a horse and stuff. But I was oh, yeah. like, but I was like, realistically. <laughs> When it comes to actors and all that, like, what are the chances that all these fools are just like on some like um, actual God fearing fucking conservatives? That's that what are- my next question was. Mm-hmm. Was that it was? Uh, so, how hard is it as an actor if you don't believe or or back any of the stuff that's being talked about in the Yellowstone show? Mm-hmm. Like, how hard I wonder is it to, to get in character? Also, the person that wrote this. Are you an undercover conservative? Like, are you undercover like family? Are you under or not even political party? But are you undercover family? 
land, rural life? Like, is that what, because I mean. So I, let me clarify too. So that goes on to say, while, uh, while getting political drew uh, the criticism mm -hmm. for Costner, he did, wouldn't change anything about the decisions he made publicly about the candidates he supported. And then quote, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really care how the cookie crumbles. That's actually a good point. You shouldn't really care what the people think right about. I mean, mm -hmm. you know about that. Uh, the people like, the people that like me don't like me anymore and that's okay. But also he talked about, because he, he classifies himself as an independent. He's told uh, the Daily Beast in 2020, I'm an independent. I vote for who I think has the best interest for the country and for the world. So he believes that those candidates have the best interest. That's what he says. At the end of it, long story short, he says, the Democratic Party doesn't represent everything I think, and neither does the Republican Party. That's all. It's just so limiting. So I don't know if he just said that to kind of like leave himself a little bit of a wiggle room for his choices, or if he really does feel that like, you know, I feel that he's he, an independent. I feel that his answer was very vague. And yeah. he didn't really address any particular issue. No, of course. Like, it's like, okay, I still don't know if you believe in killing babies in a womb. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you're just like, oh, the Dems don't and the Republicans don't. But let me add this, bro, since you haven't seen the show, right? Mm -hmm. They, like what Marisol was saying, like, are these actors, do they believe in the rural life and this and that? Well, to be quite honest, they don't really cover anything really political. Uh, I know, like, I don't pay attention 100% while the shit's on. While the show is on, mm -hmm. but I could have swore like Kevin Costner's um, character, I could have swore he said something about he was Democrat or he backed a Democrat, something or other. But they, my point is, <coughs> my me, point no. is, it, I think it's a really well written, well produced show. There's mm -hmm. some good drama, but there's nothing besides like, oh, the hats look cool and and it's cool to see the buffalo and the mountains and shit and. But besides that, there's really nothing in there that's like, you know, we read the Bible and we, we pray and this is how, this is how we, it wasn't like that Daily Wire movie with, um, Oh, Jim Cowboy. Carano and Cowboy Cerrone. And even then they weren't trying to like force you to read the Bible or nothing like that. They were just, yeah. I don't know if that makes and sense. And that one was kind of slow for me. Oh, you you watched it? No, it got too dramatic and we had to tune out because she was like, uh, this is fucking stressful. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was like... Well, let me not before going to bed. I wanted to segue into this. Uh, this kind of on subject, off subject, because we were talking about crypto and whatever. So, there's an AI that can find a video that you've taken on Instagram through cameras that were around you when you took the photo. So, I'm gonna play this for you. I'm gonna move it over to you. God damn it! Through cameras that were around mm. you. Check this out. Okay, it's a quick video. I on Twitter just revealed software that can take an Instagram photo and use AI to search open cameras in a location to see if they can find the video of you taking the photo on that day. So the guy who created Die With Me, which is that chat app you can only use when you have less than 5% battery, just unveiled this software where you give it like the Instagram photo on the left and on the right you see this AI searching through a bunch of open cameras all around the world to see if they can find the people in the photo with the proper location and give you the video of the photo Isn't actually crazy? being taken. Personally, I think this is brilliant. This was so they're using traffic cameras and cameras all around, and they can find where you took, find you taking that picture. How do they access old footage back in time? Uh, I don't know. It's artificial intelligence. I don't know how it works. And when you, here's another question: When you tell it, okay, do it to this picture, does it need to know, like, okay, motherfucker, well, what year did you take it and where? Does it at least need some info, or it could just be like, I know when that was. Honestly, you, you you would think it needs information, but you know every photo you take has metadata in it, right? Even when you, even after you upload it to Instagram, that metadata is still in it. Yes, some say. I don't know exactly how you would you would pull it out. I really don't know how that all that works. But I make a conscious effort that when I take a picture and I know it's going to go somewhere other than stay on my phone or send it to my wife or something, I will. Uh, let's see if I have an example here. You can just. Uh, do you know how to do it? Like, actually, I to took, remove the location. Yeah, thing? so yeah, yeah, you just move the information, and then you just t adjust that and take the location. No location. That way, if you ever yeah. upload it anywhere, you don't know where you took it. So, so would that protect you from that AI? Thing? Probably some, but I'm, I mean, if, if you're really savvy, you could probably still have it work. Isn't that, that, crazy? that was trippy. So scary. Because it looked like out of Batman and shit, where you had like in the layer, like you can use all the cameras to like find whoever it is you're looking for. Like, didn't we? But we already thought that happens anyway, right? Yeah, but it's trippy to see artificial intelligence. Like, I've known about facial recognition and things like that. But to see artificial intelligence take a photo that you posted on Instagram and then access a bunch of... Now, granted, it can only do it when you take it out in public in the street somewhere, right? Not, like, in your room. There's no, right. other, there's no other camera. Right. Imagine. Well, I mean... Technically, somebody could hack into your webcam. That's why people always have those those covers on their cameras. But could AI, like if I if I posted a picture right now mm -hmm. while we record this, there's a selfie, mm -hmm. and you run it through that. What's the name of the page? 
or the app or the it I already say. X out of it. I didn't know. Oh didn't. fuck. Okay. Um, let's say if I post a selfie, is it gonna be able to go back in time and be like, well, Rob's webcam was open and Mighty's whole cell phone was sitting there. Now I'm gonna show you what else was going on while you took the photo. No, they probably need access to your network, but some of these public cameras, maybe like traffic cams or whatever, it might be a little a little different situation, easier to hack into. Still weird. Yeah. Extremely. It's scary. So did that require hacking though? What, that demonstration? No, that was just like a like an open source AI software. So uh, wow. it pr probably relies on a lot of people that just really always use set, like the cameras and always post stuff on social media and that are like in the city, for instance. I don't know how it works. At what point are rappers going to stop rapping about crime? You know what I'm saying? Like, at at what point? Question. Well, I don't, I don't sit there and, I mean, I don't know if you've heard my lyrics recently, but I don't be like, fish tail out the parking lot, shooting at the ops. And da, 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 da. Yeah, 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 but you're a rapper. I don't mean that you'd say that stuff. I'm saying like you're in the industry. What's your, huh? <laughs> I didn't say you rap about that stuff. Okay. I'm saying you're a rapper in the industry. Well, no, so. I, I'm asking the, barely. I'm not really in the industry like that. But anyway, my question is this. Do the rappers consider the fact that crime is over? Like, like, do the rappers consider the fact that, like, facial recognition, like, in other words, y'all got to use different lingo and rap about different types of crime because it's almost like you can't. It's, if, I'll give you an example. UK rap, the drill rap, that's what they call it, right? Well, over there, guns are illegal. Don't nobody really have a gun. So what do they rap about? They rap about knives and stabbing each other. Yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. So with context, it makes more sense that mind you they're rapping about this stuff during a stabbing epidemic mm -hmm. but th that right there lets you know like you have to be somewhat accurate like mm. you're not gonna be rapping about guns y'all ain't got guns yeah it's not america bitch y'all rapping about stabbing each other it's never gonna end because we have so many guns there's more guns than people here i just want everybody to come together thank god come together right how do we do that? Come I just want your allergies. I want your allergies right to fix now. up. <clears throat> yeah, me too. Sorry, y'all, about this. Uh, you sound better than you have in the past couple of weeks. I'm doing better. <sighs> it's rough. Do you guys got a lot of things going on today? My wife got a lot on her plate all the time. All the time. It was funny. Saturday, I was going to go with him to Michael Berry's party. And uh, I was like, I fell asleep on the couch. My sister was coming over to babysit. She was like, go have a night like you never go out with your husband and i'm like i know i was like all right so she comes over is gonna babysit and i'm sitting on the couch and i remember us having a conversation and then you know next thing you know i wake up all scared like she was on fentanyl and i was like what <laughs> and she's like you probably should i should probably come over so you can take a nap not you go out she's like that's what you probably you should ask for and so i go upstairs and he's getting ready and i said uh all right so i'm ready he's like i mean i can go alone i'm like no i'll go with you and i was like so you can go alone <laughs> and then she said you should just go by yourself i was like yes hell yeah, yeah. are you sure <laughs> yes i mean i was fine i was like okay with him not with you can me. see the stars out there tall trees you know i'm saying number sheriffs felt like that's your new like-minded individuals you know no crime montgomery county fresh air he was like i feel like the air was lighter yeah, the, the air the air was cleaner. fresher it went a bunch of prostitution and fentanyl everywhere. So, yeah, graffiti. It was none oh of that God. shit. <laughs> nice. So, like are you saying our house has fentanyl? <laughs> I mean, Houston, Texas, Harris County is a whole lot of just broken souls. And, you know, you know, it's a lot of demonic. Well, I'm on a mission to help my community. And I'm on a mission to let people know there is such thing as hope. There is such thing as being able to come together and there is, most importantly, a thing called God, a person. And there's a thing called bail reform. <laughs> Murder capital. That's the clip right there, just zooming in on Mighty Soul's face right there, looking like Kermit. Always got to be. Mighty Soul sounds like she's going to say, we will take our county back. Make our county great uh, again. If I if I'm gonna take my that's why I was for Alexandra. She was gonna take this county Ooh, back. They, they stole that. Whoa, whoa. She was gonna wow. take this county back, and I was ready for it. They stole that. I was ready to go be a volunteer, to be a part of her whatever. Like her initiatives. I was like, yes, we need this. We need a mama bear to come in, a, a mama bear to come in and do something. Not Lena. Can't wait for two more years of uh, Dora. Uh, Lena. Can dude, suck a bit, you know what? Dude, Harris County got an F. I mean, Houston got an F on education and an F on crime. And everybody voted for these people again. All the incumbents, 
Everybody got to stay. They voted for blue all over again. Knowing that we got record crime, we got an F minus on crime, F minus on education. What if they came out like tomorrow and like, hey, we don't recommend you guys get together this Thanksgiving again. Like COVID's still out there. They could, you know what? They extended in emergency orders till the spring of 2023. What emergency? Uh, like governmental. There federal. really is no emergency, but they leave it yeah. like that. So, so they, they have, have more special powers. powers. Yeah. Wait, but what's happening? Whatever, the flu? whatever they want to do. I they, mean, they they base it off of what, uh, COVID still. Yeah. Yeah. If y'all don't realize this is that was my mind. Yeah, that came out yesterday. So now mid- midterms are over, right? And then we're about to go, so we'll leave it with this. And then on top of that, this morning, there was an article that uh, Biden's like, yeah, we're not going to be able to codify Roe v. Wade, like we said, on the midterm campaign trail. We don't, might not have the votes, so uh, see you later. Uh, the, the, the school loans also, yeah, uh, Supreme Court said we can't do it. See you later. He said, what about Roe v. Ro- Ro- Wade? They can't, co- they can't codify it because they won't, won't have the, the votes in the House. So like, they make it law. Make it, make yeah. it law. Federal. Yeah. To where it's not, it's no longer just Oops, pre- precedent. promised you and then we can't do it. Sorry, bye. So no one thinks that's weird? No, not the libs. No. no. They, they just like, well, it's because the Republicans didn't let us. Yeah. And <laughs> he's a like, good man. And he's trying. Yeah. Bro, that's like my mom. We get to the nutcracker. She goes, no traes un tapabocas. And I'm like. Damn, still. I said, mom. It's over. I will take you home. It's 2022. I said, please we, stop. We on Omicron already. I said, please stop. I said, it isn't even it's not even around anymore i was like people don't it's a common flu it's a common cold now i was like so just if you get it you're just gonna it's just gonna be a cold all of a sudden you're hearing all the flu going around the flu oh, is flu going is, around flu came back from vacation yeah um to I, your went, vacation. I went to have dinner at a uh, jimmy changas with my daughter the other day shout out to jimmy changas <clears throat> and uh boy it was a lot of people just sitting there just <laughs> really <sighs> Mm-hmm. Still with the mask. I'll still see the occasional person pumping gas with a mask on, and they get in their car and they leave it on. I'm like, wow, that's just wear it in the car, huh, bro? Super by, by themselves too. A nurse who mm-hmm. is an oncologist nurse literally told me, <clears throat> "No point of you wearing the mask unless you have like the legit yeah. surgical N95. one." And yeah, even even, then. even and then. then she was like, "So yeah, you can wear it all you want if you want." Like around when I caught COVID, she told me. She's like, you can wear it if you want. She's like, it's not going to do anything, though. Well, to leave on a good end, Thanksgiving is this week. Uh, what are, what's everybody thankful for? Let's even with something you're thankful for before we go out. I am thankful for my family, specifically my husband and my children. Um, my immediate family being my mom, my sister, everybody. Family in general, I'm, I'm thankful for them. <clears throat> I'm thankful for a great year. A lot of good things. A lot of rough patches there, but a lot of good things. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. Lord have my- mercy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, GoFundMe.com. <laughs> Give, send, go, bro. Give, uh, send, go. Patreon.com. Oh, my gosh. Um, just uh, at, at least subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, oh, something. my God. Just smash the like button. It don't cost uh, like you nothing. Like Penny says, smash. smash the like button. That's what she says. Um. Uh, health obviously yeah. uh, maybe i could do something better with my allergies but uh <laughs> health for sure um just because you know after having a baby it's it was kind of all over the place i mean i've talked about how it was everywhere and uh and just the uh growth that i've had in my business and as and a person mm-hmm. jingo i also want to thank the lord for mighty soul's business <laughs> 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 has a lot of potential <laughs> caddy corner from travis scott store in the rice village this boy said uh shit if it, if it continues like this he's like i think uh, I'm i might be able to stay, stay home. home i'm dad. gonna be a home stand home dad what up? i was like i'm never gonna miss jujitsu i'm never gonna <laughs> miss church people gonna be like man chingo what's going on? man you know wife hold it down you know baby got the, you know i'm talking about you know her apparel but yeah same thing man i just want to echo everything she said like super blessed uh happy that we have maturity and wisdom on our side and and um you know, we're raising our, our girls, family, God, family first. and Amen. Yeah, God always provides, you know, come, coming come through. through. Always coming through, even though they be stressing me out out here in these streets. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, just very blessed. Same thing. Family, health. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah. You? Family, health, and then I got to give it to the listeners. Small but mighty audiences. There's yes. Actually, it's in the tens of thousands of you guys that listen, so the ones that choose to support directly really does help the uh, the podcast, the growth of the show, the growth of whatever this network is turning into. Yeah. So shout sure. out to y'all. For sure. For sure. Hell yeah, man. Thank We're you guys so much for listening. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Have an excellent Thanksgiving. Be thankful all the time, not just on Thanksgiving. That's just right. saying. 
for sure. Ya los, ya los bachamos, se cuidan. Adiós. Peace. Peace.